Hey, with uh, Microsoft announcing changes to their Windows Server and System Center licensing, I thought I'd create this short video uh, to let you know from a high level what those changes are and some things you should watch out for. So the change is from processor-based licensing to core-based licensing. Microsoft said this is due to uh, better align with the cloud so that their customers can more easily move their licenses, their workloads from on-premises to the cloud, works better in hybrid uh, environments, and it'll just be easier to manage the licensing from that aspect. Uh, Microsoft made a similar change to SQL back in 2012, so if you're around for that, you know some of the headaches that are going to be coming up with these changes with Windows Server. Now the change will be in effect in Microsoft's Q1, which is starting July 1st, 2016. So this is right around the corner. Uh, I saw a number of customers wait with SQL and it did not go well. So uh, what you're gonna need to do is make sure that you have an inventory of the physical cores that are licensed uh, in your environment. Now, uh, if you don't have software assurance, then you're just gonna end up buying Windows Server 2016 whenever you need it. If you have software assurance, uh, this is where the inventory is gonna be super helpful. So you're going to need to, uh, whatever tool you have or Microsoft's uh, map toolkit, they have another toolkit. It is the uh, software inventory logging aggregator. It's a new tool. Haven't used it. Don't know anyone who has yet, but it's another option. And what you need to do is figure out, okay, what cores, what physical cores are licensed with software assurance today under the processing model. And if your processors have more than eight cores, Microsoft will grant you additional core licenses for those processors that are covered. So uh, the minimum core count per processor with Windows Server 2016 is going to be eight cores, uh, and a server is going to have a minimum of 16 cores. So if you have 10 core processors, this means that you're going to have a delta, and the, the practice of inventorying those uh, processors and the cores is going to get you that grant so that you don't have to pay for additional core licenses. You'll still have to renew the software assurance. Remember back to SQL, this was the case, but you won't have to pay for those additional core licenses. Uh, this adds up really quickly, especially if you've got a large data center or multiple data centers. So you're going to definitely want to get on this sooner rather than later. Now, some of the other changes that are going to be happening because of the move to Server 2016 is that Standard and Data Center are no longer going to have all of the same features and functionalities. There's a lot of the core functionality that's in there, but check out the data sheets for some more information on the differences between Data Center and Standard. Uh, you may have also seen Nano Server listed. Uh, it's not actually a new addition, it's just a deployment model. It's supposed to be lighter, uh, possibly more secure. Uh, some things you will be doing the same is Windows Server Cals are going nowhere. So your users or devices or a mix will have to be licensed with a Windows Server Cal. Uh, if you have external users connecting to your Windows Server licenses, not employees, then those will require an external connector license for each of those servers. Uh, additionally, remote desktop services, that Cal is also staying put. So you'll need, if you're running remote desktop services or formerly terminal services, then you're going to need to license those users or devices with an RDS Cal. Uh, finally, these changes, uh, they do apply to System Center as well, so watch out for that. But make sure you're on top of this. Um, if you have you know, more cores per processor than the minimums, then you're going to be paying more. You're going to want to put this in your budget. Uh, one last thing, if you have an enterprise agreement or server and cloud enrollment uh, with, with Windows Server, then those licenses, you'll still be able to continue to purchase under the processor model until that agreement expires. Uh, but once it does, you'll have to start buying the core licenses. Now you'll be able to deploy Server 2016 if you're under an enterprise agreement with Windows Server on that customer price sheet, the CPS. So you know, go ahead and play with it once it's available, but just know that you are going to have to make that shift to the cores uh, at renewal time. I uh, hope this video was helpful. Let me know if I can help with anything else. If you have any questions on Windows Server, thanks so much for watching.